Okay, let's do this. Let's get it. We're going to get a Campus to Canton League going. We're very excited. Of course we are. Why wouldn't we be? We're going to go to fan tracks. We're going to say, hey, let's start a league. We're going to go football. We're going to choose NCAA football. Okay, we're going to go create a league. All right, this is what's nice. We're going to use the default setup here, but once you get a setup together, this is a nice feature. They can just let you clone it, and then if you're going to have another league down the line, you can just have all your settings already done, so you only have to do it once. But for our purposes right now, we're going to just, we're just going to say uh, use a Fantrax default setup. So here we go. Head-to-head -head points is what I use. So we'll just say example league. Team name is just team name, yo. And the league type is going to be a dynasty league. So let's get it. The rest you can just leave. So I'm going to go ahead and submit. Here we go. Now we're going to go ahead and I can click on commissioner up here. And that'll give you a whole big menu of things that you can check out, customize. Uh, you can explore that on your own. But basically, we're just going to go ahead and go to the, the drop down floating menu to get the league set up. So that's where we want to be. We're going to go to league setup. Uh, you're going to have everything here. You can get a league logo, a wall image. This is your wall image. This is your logo. So that's my example from the Survivors League that we have going. So I'm going to reference this a bunch as we as we go through this. But this is the general screen where you'll set that up. Anytime you make any changes, make sure you hit save. Make sure you hit that. Even when you're on the different tabs, anytime you make a change, every single tab, you want to make sure that you save and continue. So at this point, I'm just going to take you through basically the back end of my league that I have going here. For me, I have no divisions. Okay, for the schedule, we go the standard week one through week 13. And that means our last regular season week is week 10. We're going to use the playoffs. And by going week 10, that allows us to have six teams in the playoffs, run it for three weeks, and we finish in week 13. So that's how we roll there. Okay, I'm not hitting save on all this just because this is already set up. So if you were setting all this up on your end, this would be how you would basically want to follow along if you want to mirror it like ours, right? This is just how we have it going. Like I always say in, in football and in coaching, look, there are a lot of ways to do things. You may do yours your way. This is how we do ours, all right? This is how I have my league. Doesn't mean it's the right way. It's just my way, okay? Uh, for matchups, that'll give you a nice, once you get everything set up, that'll give you a little section where you get to see who's playing who how many times, Okay, I don't even bother with the consolation bracket over on the NCAA side of things. I know people like it for the NFL side. For the NCAA, I don't bother. For the player pool, we got everybody. I love it. I love having everybody, even the group of five schools. There's always some great group of five teams out there, some great players, some great prospects. So for a campus, the Canton League, I think you definitely want to have that involved in the mix. Anyway, positions. We have 45-man rosters. You want to have bigger rosters on something like this because there's a lot more buys in the college season. And then there are obviously a lot of guys who aren't going to be necessarily NFL future guys, but they're going to contribute to your fantasy team on a weekly basis in the NCAA side of the league. So it's great to have big rosters. So 45 for the roster, 11 starters that we have going, 34 on the bench, that adds up to 45. Okay, no max injured reserve. Why bother? All right, if they're injured, just throw them on there and that's fine. We do not use minor league. That's, that would be kind of like your taxi squad equivalent. We don't do it on the NCAA side. The rosters are huge as it is. We have unlimited taxi on the NFL side of things, or at least up to 50. When they go up to the NFL side of things, they'll go automatically on the taxi squad and you got a max of 50. So unless all your players suck, you're going to be able to have plenty of spots with 50 available on the taxi squad for up to two years. For our starters, what we do, we do super flex in the NFL, but there are so many quarterbacks in the college game that it's definitely easy to do a two quarterback system in college. Two quarterbacks, two running backs, three wide outs. Uh, we could easily do two tight ends here if we wanted, but we don't. Just one tight end and then three flex spots. However you set things up, make sure you save it on each tab, save and continue. For our scoring, here we go. We go general over here. Uh, you get to your scoring. This is how we score it. Like I said, this is our way. It doesn't mean it has to be yours. The 
asterisk here is the tight end premium so that is saying that it's one point per reception for most everybody and if i go to if i click on quarterback nothing no change no change if i go to tight end you can see that we set that up as 1.5 for uh points so they get a bonus on that to do that to get that going uh, you do just have to make sure that you check off score positions differently if you score that then you can stop manipulating things just by position. Now, one other thing with the tight end premium, if you, if you want to set that up, one thing you want to make sure you check off is to score flex positions by the player's actual positions. So that basically means if you have a tight end in your flex spot, they're still going to get that bonus score. And they're not going to get scored as a flex, as if that's a, its own thing. It's going to score them as whatever their actual position is. Since you have a different scoring system for tight ends, you want to make sure that it gets accounted for when they are racking up points for your squad. I got lineups locking uh, one minute before the start of the game. Uh, and all this stuff this is how we have all our setups so again you're gonna set it up how you want to have it set up and if you want to pause the video and just match everything the way that i got it going that'll give you something i'm not saying i have everything right but i feel pretty good about where i'm at this is uh how we have our claims and drops set up in our bylaws you only have two claims that you can make each year there's, there's sort of like this little free agent debbie auction after week four and after week eight and that's it no other ads you just got to make sure that your owners understand that because you really sort of need to have it set up that they could do it at any time they just need to all understand that you can't if I'm the commission, I got to make sure it's part of my job. I got to make sure that I'm hyping it up saying, hey, two weeks away, we're going to have that auction after week four. Once we hit that week four, I'm hammering everybody again saying, this is it. This is the claim window. You can claim one player this week. You can claim one player after week eight. That is it. You can't do two in any one of those weeks. One player each one of those weeks and that's it that'll create some great excitement mid-season no matter how somebody's doing there's going to be somebody that they're able to put a bid in it put a bid in on on several guys that they're interested in there's always as we all know tons of players who break out out of nowhere and nobody saw it coming and you know next thing you know you got the next Clyde Edwards Hilaire next thing you know you get the next Joe Burrow all that stuff right we got 45 roster spots we're going to draft the full roster 45 rounds set that up it's pretty straightforward the fees and prizes like I said I I'm doing that all separately we're not using this fan tracks treasurer personally I don't doesn't mean you can't explore it maybe it's awesome let me know if it is for us we got a dynasty uh, we do allow one year ahead uh, trade and draft picks. We have a 15-round draft on the tail end of each summer to get the incoming freshmen and any extra breakout people who are left uh, as free agents. So that 15-round draft will cover that. That'll sort of, in theory, fill up your roster from all the guys who have gone on, graduated, gone to the NFL, and so forth. If I go over to the homepage over here, you can see that I have a link to the bylaws. So that'll bring me right to the bylaws page. The MFL site link, I can link that right on the homepage. So that gives us the ability to pop around right from league to league since it is two connected leagues. And then I also did a little screencast recording on how to trade on fan tracks. I don't think it's super intuitive. That's definitely an issue. It's, it's not hard, but it's not very intuitive to figure out out how you trade when you're trying to initiate a trade once you get it it's simple enough to do but it's not necessarily all that intuitive so i i did do a uh, little screencast video on that for people who had any interest in uh, checking that out once you actually get into the fan tracks draft here's the fan tracks draft room here's what the interface looks like i actually like it a good bit you can see this is the nerds c to c draft that we have going on right now I tried to put a bunch of seniors down here in the queue just in case this video premieres while we still have the draft going on. I mean, we do have 15 rounds to go. Anyway, here's my team so far. You can see the whole, you know, there's all sorts of ways to organize. Pretty standard in that respect. The thing is, a lot of times it takes a while. You may be drafting before the players that you're trying to draft have been added to the fan track system. It's just one of those situations with college. Once they actually are enrolled in school and put on each team's roster, they'll relatively quickly catch up with that and add a bunch of players to their system. But until that happens, they aren't there. So you can see down at the bottom over here, Rodney Smith has been drafted from Minnesota. And you see here, Kyle says that's a placeholder for Daniel Jackson. 
Okay, similar over here, Shea Patterson. We know that he's moved on. Matt says, this is a placeholder for A.J. Henning, wide receiver from Michigan. So these placeholders, we want to make sure that we have a place to track them. So if you're trying to do that, set up a Google Sheet. Okay, you can see how we have it set up over here. This is from the Survivors Draft, that Survivors League we were looking at earlier. I got it set up so that I have each guy tracked what player from what team at what position who drafted that player, okay, that it was a place that was held, and then who the placeholder player was. So that I know as a commish, when these players stop populating into the fan track system, I know that, for instance, just a little while ago, I went in, I found Zachary Evans in the system, I put him on Matt Hicks's roster, and then noted it as such by unchecking this box and checking it uh, that he was in the system over here so that I know that that is not no longer a placeholder that I need to address as we head closer to the season. So this is actually a really key column over here so that I know that when I add Zachary Evans, I'm going to go ahead and drop Justin Jefferson. Otherwise, it's just a giant list and it's just a lot easier to have a one-for-one -one swap to make. And that indicates to the owners themselves, they know if they see somebody who shouldn't be there, they know that they have not yet caught up with all the placeholders and they can look back on the spreadsheet and know who still needs to come and get populated onto their roster. So that's a very helpful tool that I would absolutely suggest you set yourself up with you can certainly rock your pro side of things on fan tracks if you want they have a completely capable system there our owners in the survivors league voted to do it with mfl so this is what we ended up setting up i think if you're watching this video this deep into the video you know what's up with mfl leagues you've played in them and i don't have to really go in great detail about that it's pretty straightforward i'm happy to share this by law system with anybody who wants to check it out doesn't mean you need to use it you can change it tweak it do what you want to do with it if it helps you get an understanding of how at least a couple leagues are set up maybe you can adapt it and make it your own all you want if you want to use it straight up as is feel free to do that too but you want to make sure that it's thorough that it addresses lots of different situations and handles a lot of problems that could come up you want to see things ahead of time what could happen down the line and make sure you have that addressed that's a big key so if you have strong bylaws, you can be confident that you're going to crush it when it's time to collect a group of dedicated owners and have a blast battling it out in these two parallel linked leagues. Listen, hopefully this is helpful. I hope in some way it is. And I hope that you are excited to get after it, get in there, dig in, set up your campus to can't leave because I'm telling you, you're going to love it. You're going to be thrilled that you did. You're going to have a blast with a bunch of pals. It's going to be the best fantasy football format you've ever played. If you've never played it before, trust me, you won't be sorry that you jumped in and tried. And if you're nervous to do it, I'm telling you, there's no reason to be. This is not not nearly the commitment that it sounds like. It sounds like this big scary thing and it's not. There are no waivers except for two simple weeks. It's really just setting lineups each week, which is simple to do. You set your lineups. You rock it out. You have a blast. You have a great time in the draft each summer. Who doesn't love drafting? And there's a lot of research you end up doing, but you learn so much about so many players so much earlier than everybody else. Next thing you know, it's helping you in all your leagues. You know all the different guys coming up, all the draft classes that are coming out in the next two, three years, and you immediately have a giant advantage over a lot of league mates in many other leagues that you're in. Like I said, I hope it's helpful. I hope you dig it. I look forward to hearing about your campus to Canton event just hit me up on Twitter at Dynasty Tools. As always, we're building up all our Debbie content at DynastyNerds.com. Make sure you like, subscribe, all that stuff. Stick with us. We got you. The nerds always got you.